Hey, what is up mortals? It is James Cifer here, and before we get into today's video, I'd like to say a few things. Firstly, if you have any what if ideas or video topics that you would like me to cover, please leave them in the comment section of this video or post them in the channel's Discord. Secondly, a link to my Patreon will be in the description, and thirdly, a link to the Discord group chat will be in the description as well. Lastly, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and it would be a huge help to the channel if you do so. Now, into the video. How does One For All work? This is a question a lot of us have asked ourselves, and yes, there are a few other videos out there covering this topic, but I don't think any of them get it quite right. Yes, they get bits and pieces, but never the whole thing, but I'll get into that in a bit. For now, let's focus on the basics of what makes up One For All. One For All is made up of two quirks. A quirk that allows you to pass on your quirk, we'll call this quirk transfer for now, and a power stocker quirk. Let's focus on the second quirk for now. The stockpile quirk builds up power over time, meaning that to begin with the quirk wasn't very strong, but after some time it slowly built up to the point where you were basically twice your normal strength. So you were twice as strong, twice as fast, your reaction time was twice what it was normal, and it's basically an all around 2x boost. That's to begin with. Think of this quirk as a multiplier quirk, where over time it gets twice as strong as it was before, over and over and over. It just takes time to build up to that strength. Now, the first user of One For All was the second person to possess the power stalker quirk, as All For One had taken this quirk and forcibly placed it onto his younger brother. Now, that someone else has to have had this quirk for long enough that they were able to make use of it to the point where All For One noticed it and decided that would be a worthy quirk for me to give my brother. This person would have been around, let's say, 20, just because I believe that they would be higher than that, but they could also be lower than that, so 20 is a safe number. This means that they would have had their quirk for roughly 16 years. 16 years, let's see, that would be around about 4 years to double it, so 8 times a normal person's strength, speed, and just all around boost. Something else that is important to note is Azuku is technically the 10th holder of this power stocker quirk. He is the 9th user of One For All, but the 10th user of this power stocker quirk. But let's go back to the first user for now. When he received this power stocker quirk, something rare happened. Both his quirk, the transfer quirk, and the stockpiling quirk combined. This created a brand new quirk that possessed both the abilities of the transfer quirk and the power stacker quirk. This quirk was called One For All. One For All worked by stockpiling power over time. Just like the stockpiling quirk, something that still needs to be noted is One For All still had the power from the stockpiling quirk built up, which means the first user, when he had One For All, was around 8x normal to begin with. I say 8x as in 8 times stronger. This means the quirk would have been seen as a basic super strength, super speed, and super reflexes. It would have been on the lower scale of those quirks, but still noticeable that it possessed all three abilities, which is why I think All For One picked it out for his younger brother. Something interesting to note is, with One For All, you are able to focus your power into a certain area, which increased your output by about five times what it normally would be, instead of having the power spread through your whole body, in the example of Full Cow, to where it's all in your one arm. I'll go into this a bit more in depth in a bit. Now, before jumping ahead to Azuku and All Might, I need to discuss how the transfer quirk works. Transfer allows a user to transfer their quirk to another person by making the other person digest their DNA. However, this only works if the user wants them to gain their quirk. The quirk cannot be forcibly taken due to this. This could also be why All For One has not taken One For All back, as it cannot be taken by force. However, it can be forced onto someone else by forcing or making someone else digest your DNA. Anyway, now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump ahead to Azuku and All Might. Azuku's first use of 1-4 was an uncontrolled use of about 5% in his arms and legs. He jumped with 5% being distributed equally in his legs, around 2.5% in each. But this was the first time he used his quirk, which resulted in him shattering both his legs. Then he hit with a full 5% smash using his right arm, which when he hit the robot, caused the bones in his arms to completely shatter. Later on, Azuku's body gets used to 1-4-all, and because of this, and extra training he does, he's 
able to use 5% without breaking his body. However, he can feel the strain and overusing it will result in his bones breaking. A mistake that a lot of people make in these early episodes of My Hero Academia is assuming that this smash against a robot and the ones that he does with his arms are 100% of his power. This is just plain out false, as 100% of his power is over 100% of All Might's power. As the second he had one for all, he had the equivalent power to All Might in his prime, well, the potential power. His body wasn't quite able to handle or draw out that energy as well. This is how we're able to tell that it's not even close to around 10% of All Might's power, which is why we're able to get it down to around 5% and why that makes sense for it to be 5%. Also, another thing to note is we only have All Might out of his prime and extremely injured to scale off. We do not have any prime All Might to base this off of yet, which is why we also haven't seen All Might go 100% as once he received the respiratory injury, that pretty much took him out of his prime. Some would say the United States of Smash was his 100% but that just can't be, as he had not only passed on One For All, but he had received extreme injuries to his respiratory system and the embers of One For All were pretty much gone. I could see him having maybe 50% at best to be able to access. Now, All Might normally moves around with around 20-30% to 30 of One For All on, as any more than that would cause the air pressure when he moves around to appear just like his punches. You can see that with the Sludge Villain, how the air pressure pretty much changes the weather. However, when he's about to hit things, he increases his percentage to what he thinks would work best in that situation, which is a pretty good strategy if you ask me. Now for the part I've been personally waiting to do, let's go into depth on full cow and focused. Starting with focused, which is having one for all focused in a single area of your body, while full cow is spreading it throughout your entire body. Now let's say each of your arms is worth about a fifth of your body and each of your legs is worth the same. Your chest and head, that's worth the other one-fifth. Now that we've divided up the body area that one for all can be channeled through, let's say you only had access to one for all at 5%. So with focus, you would have 5% in that one area, say your right arm, while full cow, you'd have it spread out across your body evenly, which would result in you having 1% in your arms and legs and chest area. So it's balanced out throughout your body. What's the benefits to each? Well, 5% in your right arm alone allows you to do those massive smashes against the robots and such, but the rest of your body isn't powered up which means leaves the rest of your body in a weakened state. So if you're looking for raw power, having it focused in one location is the way to go. But if you're trying to be agile as well as having some power, having full cowl on is the way to go because with the 5% spread out through your whole body, you're able to do much more when it comes to reflexes, agility, and then having some strength left over. You would only be one fifth as fast as you would be normally if you had it focused into one of your legs, or one-fifth as strong as you would be if you had it focused into your arms, or one-fifth the reaction speed if you had it focused in your head. But being able to access what you need straight away is a trade-off that is pretty much worth it when it comes to full cow. Another bonus to full cow is when you train to increase your percentage, you can also do special training to increase your percentage in one area for a split instance like All Might does, where he instantly increases the amount of one for all he's using in his punches right as he's about to hit to get the maximum amount of output as he can without wasting so much energy. Also, while reducing the amount of destruction that will be caused by his punches. Another perk to doing this is you can also maintain full cow on the rest of your body. So it's like having focused on stacked on top of your full cow, which is incredibly effective. Azuku did this with his quote unquote 1 million percent smash. Now, I do believe that covers everything. If you have any further requests or questions about one for all, leave them in the comment section. If it turns out I missed anything or I left something out, I'll make a follow-up video. Anyway, the hashtag for this video is hashtag one for all. But yeah, until next time, let's set our like goal around 500 and peace out mortals. Don't forget to have an amazing day. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire. But it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through